All of them, all American athletes, including Seattle Seahawks, 270 pounds, six foot four inch defensive end, Grant Wistrom. Grant was our middle child, and when he was very young, we almost lost him from a severe illness. After that, I always thought God had big plans for him. He went on to win three national championships at the University of Nebraska, and in seven years in the NFL, he's been to two Super Bowls and received the largest signing bonus ever paid by the Seattle Seahawks. Kathy Wister. I know, you're wondering, well, so how big was that signing bonus? Well, it was uh, $14 million, which is a lot of money. That's not the contract. No, that's, that's the bonus. The, and uh, we found out, reason they gave it to him up front, they felt that uh, he would probably be there, stay there, wouldn't embarrass him. So it just shows you good hard work pays off. <laughs> so. Are you still glad he got that college degree to fall back on? Well, uh, what he wants to do is actually coach and teach when he's done, so he'll still have to get a teaching degree. But yes, yes, we're glad that he stayed and finished up. Yeah. You say that people think your son's life is a fairy tale. Why Grant, do you think that? He always seems, especially his brothers do, seems to be the right place, the right time, but he's worked very hard to get where he is. Uh, never has been, well, he was on one year with losing team with the Rams, but basically he's always been on a winning team, has that sort of a winning mentality. Well, been very fortunate. Listen to this. This woman went to her son's football games and never saw him lose for four years. Wow. Two years in high school, two years in college mm -hmm. at Nebraska, and you didn't see him lose. I mean, you might have thought something was well, a little strange there. I realized then that it's just as hard to be a good winner as it is to be a good loser, to be humble. And uh, his other brothers, you know, weren't quite that fortunate. So uh, he really, it's a... It's just an experience you can't believe. Your story is not unlike uh, the story Benita Favre told about uh, her husband, Big Irv, uh, his <laughs> influence on Brett Favre. Your husband, Ron, was, he was kind of a tough presence in the boys' lives, too. How, how, did, how did he, uh, 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 what did he, did he train them, or what were the rules? The thing was, I, I really truly believe being a mother is easier than being a father, because my job was to love them, wash their uniforms, you know, have food always available. A lot of food. Right. And, and I was never, I was always the one that said, oh, honey, you know, it's okay. I always tell them they had a good game, cause, and they know I don't know if they did or not, but that, that's just, that's what mothers do. And Ron, luckily, uh, they, give the, they give their dad a lot of credit because Ron kind of set the rules, and we followed them, or the, they followed them, and I enforced it. And uh, they set the, He set the bar really, really yes. high. And if they reached it, he set it a little bit higher. Right. And, and we had a lot of disagreements about that, never in front of the boys, but off to the side. And his theory was, whatever you do, well, he had three rules. You never quit in the middle of anything. You never blame anybody else for your mistakes. And for every action, there's a consequence. So whatever you did, it might be good or bad, there was a consequence. And yet he tempered that with, loving them more than life itself, and the boys knew that. You have a problem that I could um, uh, Im imagine having a, a son with a, you know, that uh, athletic success, and the, he's got the fame and the, the money and all, but he's got the uh, two brothers. How you, as a mother, can keep some balance in, in the relationship between his success and his brother's success? We always try to teach, uh, treat each boy, you know, different, uh, differently as well as treating them the same. And once they got home, they were still, you know, somebody's brother. And actually, they were all home just last week. We had Christmas finally. And when they're together, uh, they're just three boys, and uh, I don't think there's any jealousy between any of them. Well, you said something about we just had Christmas. Um, there are other uh, NFL moms in the audience, and I think they know what you mean. But that's... When you play in the NFL, you maybe didn't get home for Christmas. I don't think people realize quite what the, the young men give up. I mean, we haven't had Christmas together. Oh, my gosh, it's been probably 10 years that they've all actually been home at Christmas. Uh, Kathy and Celia, um, guess who's here? Oh. Gentlemen. Oh, my God. <laughs>
I vanished. Where did Jane go? We've got to find a place for these big guys to sit down, and we'll be right back. How close was I when I said 270, 6'4"? I'm off-season. I shrink down a little bit in the off-season, so I'm about 260 now. Yeah, but you're Getting still, fighting still weight, six foot four. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you look like such a, a nice man, but well, you, you're, I like you're, think that I am. Well, your own mother says that you can turn into an animal yeah. on the field. You can. How do you turn that on and off? Uh, well, I grew up fighting with two other brothers, so it comes pretty naturally to me. But uh, I don't know. It's just when you step on the field, there's just something about the game, the excitement, and the energy that uh, it's just a, a switch that's flipped. And uh, I mean, and guys like Ian and I, I mean, we play a game a certain way, and that's in just like uh, Brett and Tiki and Rondé, we play a game a certain way, and that's 100% all the time. So when you have that kind of love for the game, it's easy to do when you get on the field. Yeah. You uh, <clears throat> kind of got in a little trouble when you were young. Much like oh, probably yeah. all the other guys. <laughs> okay. That been well, about. I know, I think your, your story is special. Uh, maybe some, <laughs> of the, some of the other guys maybe uh, uh, crashed their father's pickup trucks too, but. You were, oh, how old? Uh, two, three. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, little, little you know, fella. But who's going to leave the three-year-old behind the wheel? Yeah, I mean, that's, 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 that's the that. question you really need to be asking there. <laughs> you know? What's the story there? Well, he was with his dad, and his dad just wasn't using his head, left the keys in the car, and he ran into a hearst in front of him. And, oh, oh yeah, God. it was big. Ron came home. It was home. empty. <laughs> Baby, do I want Grant to say something really, really sweet about his mom, or do I want him to tell about the welding episode? <laughs> oh, the welding episode. Yeah. What happened? Everybody has a bad day. <laughs> so, it's, uh, one of the things we got to do uh, when we were younger is we'd buy old cars and fix them up. We we got to do. Um, <laughs> not really sure how that's I'd, how I should phrase that. We were kind of made to do it. If we wanted a car, that's how we got about it. But uh, so I, we had a welder and I had a particularly bad day and I broke the welder and then set fire to the yard <laughs> and punched a hole in the wall all in about an hour's time span there. So um, I didn't get to do much for the rest of the summer because no. I lied about the yard and I got caught in that one. And uh, so for the rest of the summer I was grounded and that was about the only time I've really actually ever looked forward to going to two-a-day football practices for the summer. <laughs> I got to go to church, and he was yeah. on fire for the Lord that summer. On fire for the Lord. Every time church opened, he was there. Yeah. Did, did Grant give you that pen, the football mom? Well, I, he probably would have, because he knows I like glitter and all that stuff, but I've always worn something like that. Are those diamonds? Oh, sure. No one gives me diamonds. <laughs> Not, not that he wouldn't, but I she lose pair, everything. She has a pair of diamond earrings in her ear that haven't left her ear since the day she got them. And that was 15 years I ago. I can't get them off. She put the wrong back on it, so now they're stuck in I there. Can't. <laughs> You're saying it's kind of hard to shower your mother with uh, finery? Yeah, you know, I take care of her in other ways, but the jewelry isn't one of them. So. I lose everything <laughs> now. You can, you can conceive oh, of right. how much that signing bonus was, but money can be toxic. I really, I have a hard time comprehending it. I am a very uh, cheap person at heart. I That's truly what they am. Say. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but uh, Grant really has a, a, a good hand on it. He does, obviously, he's done a lot of things for his family. He uses the money sort of as an avenue to other things. He has uh, the Grant Wistrom Foundation where he helps uh, children with cancer. And we're getting ready to go on a trip in February, a ski trip. And when he's around those little kids, I mean, what he can do for them, not just with the money, but because of who he is, I really believe that's his gift. Not I mean, I think football has allowed him to do it, and I really do think that's part of the plan. So the money, I mean, it's been wonderful, but quite honestly, uh, with or without the money, raising the three boys, eh, that's the biggest thrill of all. The money, now trust me, being here today on the Jane Polly Show, this is wonderful. Yes. So I, I'm not going to put it down or anything, yeah, but uh, he uses the money really to help uh, especially the little kids. He said, adults maybe aren't always so honest. Kids are honest, and he loves being Thanks with them. Thanks to uh, you guys and uh, the mothers, and especially Geraldine, Bonita, Celia, Kathy. Just been great having you, and respect what you've done, and I hope your teams always win. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jane. I hope your team wins, too. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.